Hi, welcome to this IB Maths Intense session. This is our fourth um, video on the subject of counting principles and this time we're moving on from what we were doing on permutations to look at the idea of combinations. This is an important uh, topic uh, in context. We've looked at factorial notation and permutations. Combinations is a really, really important thing to understand because we'll need to use it exclusively when we're using the binomial expansion, which is a big topic which we'll be coming on to shortly. So just a quick recap then from what we looked at before about permutations. Permutations, if you remember, was all about how many unique arrangements I can make of a number of items chosen from a set. So in this example on the screen, I've got five different cards, A, B, C, D and E. How many ways can I arrange two letters chosen from those five? If we remember from our notation before, five P2, which we could also write that as five times four. And uh, that gives me uh, an answer of 20, 20 different ways that I can arrange two letters chosen from five. And um, if we remember that formula, 5P2, we can write that down as 5 factorial over, and the bottom was n minus r, 5 minus 2 factorial, and that cancelled down to 5 times 4 equals 20. So that's the background, that was the permutation stuff. Now if I really wanted to, I could list all of those permutations, and I have done because I'm a very sad individual. I've listed all of those permutations there on the screen. But what if I wasn't interested in the arrangements of the letters that I'd drawn. I just wanted to choose two letters from five. Then I'd have a very different setup because there's a lot of duplicates in there. If I had to choose two letters from five, well, if I chose AB and BA like that, I've effectively chosen the same two, haven't I? So AB and BA are different permutations. They're different unique arrangements of the cards, but they are the same combination. They're the same two cards that I've chosen. And the difference between permutations and combinations is exactly that. Permutations, I'm interested in the unique arrangement, the order. So AB is different from BA. But in the world of combinations, I'm only interested in the two that I've chosen. And AB and BA are the same choice. So our formula that we've been using for permutations um, is not going to work here because if you can see I've got well actually twice as many if you look at that I've shaded, shaded them for you so you can see all the pairs you can see that I've actually got 10 pairs of um, the same two so how did we get that well if we think about um, what we just worked out for our permutations we said that was 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial, which gave me 20. But now I've only got 10. So I've divided by 2. So why have I divided by 2? Well, because for each of those groups, there are two items that I've arranged. How many ways can I arrange those two items? Well, 2 or 2 factorial. So what I've actually done is I've taken my 5 factorial over 3 factorial and divided the whole answer by 2 factorial because I'm getting rid of all of the duplicates caused by the fact that it's the same two that I've drawn out. And that's where I get my 10 from. Now, interestingly, this number and this number add up to five. This one here is my n minus r, five minus two, and this one is my r. So I can generalize those into a formula now. So NCR, the number of ways I can choose R items from a set of N, is going to be N factorial over N minus R factorial, like before with the permutations, but also multiplied by R factorial to take out the effect of duplication of all those different unique arrangements, even though the, the cards were the same. And sure enough, that formula is written for you. You don't have to remember it. It's on your formula sheet there. NCR equals N factorial over R factorial 
times n minus r factorial. This is an incredibly useful little bit of maths that we will see in use a lot when we look at the binomial expansion. Now, just as an aside, because it's interesting, um, is Pascal's triangle. An amazing piece of maths made famous by Blaise Pascal, although it had been in use many, many centuries before across the world, but Blaise Pascal made it um, famous in the mid 1600s when he wrote his treatise. Um, and here are the first um, five rows or four rows, the top of it we call row zero. And hopefully you'll have seen this before, but it's a nice little triangle. It's got lots and lots of mathematical patterns and sequences in it, but we'll just focus on combinations right now. And uh, let's fill in the next row of the uh, triangle. So you can see how it works. It's got one on the outside and one on the outside there. And then we get every um, number in the uh, triangle by adding the two numbers above. So four plus one is going to give me five. Four plus six is going to give me ten. Six plus four is going to give me ten. And then four plus one is going to give me five. Now, what is significant about that? Well, you might remember that we got an, a result of 10 before when we were choosing two items from five. Now, if we look at these numbers, if I was choosing none from five, how many ways could I do that? Well, there's only one way I can choose nothing, and that's by choosing nothing. So the one is actually the result for 5C0. And the next, how many ways could I choose one item from a set of five? Well, if there's five items, there's only five ways that I could choose one, and it's going to be one of the five. So this five is 5C1. And then we just did the example before of choosing two items from five, and we got a result of 10. So sure enough, this is 5C2. Now, if we uh, did the same maths before, we would find, amazingly, that 5C3 is also 10. Notice this row is symmetrical. So 5C2 is the same as 5C3. Why would that be? Well, think about it. If I chose two items from 5, by definition, I've also chosen three items from 5, because they're the three that I didn't choose. So they're symmetrical. The number of ways of choosing two items from 5 is exactly the same as choosing three from five, because when I choose two, I've also chosen three at the same time. And sure enough, look at the way of choosing four items from five, gives me a result of five, which is exactly the same result as choosing one from five. It's symmetrical. And then, last of all, if I chose all five from five, there's only one way of doing that, and that's to choose them all, which is exactly the same as if I'd chosen none from five. It's symmetrical. So Pascal's triangle is amazing because this row here is giving me the set of results for 5CR and the row above is the solutions for 4CR and then 3CR and 2CR and so on. And um, it's useful to be able to remember how to devise Pascal's triangle for the first six or seven rows, because if it's a non-calculator paper, this is quite a nice way, very quickly, of finding a solution to each of those NCR um, calculations without having to do the maths yourself. Pascal's triangle does it for us. Um, a great piece of maths, and yeah, well worth remembering. So let's uh, finish this session with a simple example. Um, yeah, I've got five books on a shelf. How many ways can I choose three books from the shelf? That's simply five, choose three. Think of that C as meaning choose. How many ways can I choose three from five? Do that on your calculator, and sure enough, you'll find, well, it's going to be five factorial over three factorial times two factorial. But you don't need to do that, really. Your calculator will do 5C3, and that gives the result of 10. And similarly, as I said before, 5C2 is equal to 5 factorial, this time, over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. And miraculously, that gives exactly the same result of 10, because if I've got 5 books and I choose 3, I've also chosen 2 at the same time, because I've left those 2 behind. So that's a, a nice bit of symmetry, 
and uh, it's a, a nice way of thinking about things for combinations. So that's a good introduction to the subject and um, the next video will explore the types of questions that we might get that involve the use of combinations um, and like before with permutations maybe there are some restrictions or more than one group that we have to think about so we'll look at those questions next. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget to like it and of course to subscribe to the YouTube channel IB Maths Intense. Tell your friends I'm here Drop me an email on ibmathsintense at gmail.com if there's something specific you'd like to see, if you've got any questions, or if you've spotted any mistakes that I've made. Because I'm human, I'm bound to make some sometime. Anyway, for now, enjoy your maths and take care.